What is up awesome peeps? Brett McCluskey here with Electrified Reviews and today I have the very great honor, privilege, whatever you want to call it, of reviewing the Stealth B52 Bomber electric bike. This thing is awesome. Here we go. Okay guys, we got a lot to go over with this bike. There's, I mean, this thing is probably, it, it's, it's gotta be the most technologically advanced bike, production bike at least, uh, on the market that, that I know of. I haven't seen anything else like this uh, in my years of doing the reviews. It's just, it's been awesome. As If you guys probably seen, if you haven't already, we did an unboxing on this uh, a couple months ago and since then, we have just been testing this thing, putting us through its paces, um, and now you know we think we're ready to give it a fair and accurate review, um, kind of give you guys the pros and cons here, tell you all about it. So let's dive in. I think the very first thing here, before we even really, before we even start talking about the specs on this, let's talk about price, because this is the most expensive bike we have seen. Okay, so this thing starts, the Stealth B52 Bomber Electric Bike, starts at uh, $10,400, so, that's a lot of guacamole. I mean, that's like that's like a car, right? You could literally buy a car with that. You could buy, I mean, a, a really nice motorcycle. You could buy an R1 easy and have like, you could probably buy a couple of them, have money left over, right? So look, we know this is expensive. We know this thing is honestly off the charts expensive. And to be honest, 10,400 bucks, guys, that's the starting price on this, okay? That's for the base model. This thing right here, this model that we are testing has all the bells and whistles all the upgrade features. Um, and when you get all that stuff, this thing can cost upwards of close to 13,000 bucks. So a lot of money. Now the one cool thing this company does is Stealth does offer like a financing option. So you can do up to 24 months for payments. I mean, does that make it easier? I guess it's still more than 10 grand out of your wallet. So, you know, that's, I, I have to start with that because it just, it has to be said. This thing is extremely expensive, extremely pricey. Um, but you know, when you're when you've got top of the line gear, it's, you're going to be paying, you're going to be paying a lot. That's just, <laughs> that's just the name of the game, man. That's, that's how it is. So look, let's start back here with the power. Um, this motor puts out 6,300 Watts of power. Okay. This is a, uh, Crystallite H series motor here, 6,300 Watts peak output. I, I'm just gonna say it again, 6,300 Watts. Okay. A normal electric bike, maybe. 250 watts is the minimum, right? 500 watts is pretty powerful. 750 watts is like, okay, that's, we're getting into serious power territory. 1,000 watts, now we're probably gonna be in the class four unregulated bikes. That's a lot of power. You can do wheelies with, with 1,000 watts, but up 6,300 watts, 6,300, I mean, this thing is ridiculously powerful. It is so torquey, so much power on this. But having the motor in the back, there is a downside to that. It's a hub motor and it's, it's huge. It's very heavy as well. So that means that motor is gonna be unsuspended weight and that rear shock right there is gonna to have to work double time to dampen not just the weight of the rider and the trails, but also this back tire bumping up and down with that heavy motor in the back. So there's gonna be a lot of extra wear on the suspension because this is a rear hub motor as opposed to um, you know, a mid drive. So that's just something to keep in mind over time, you know, kind of watch that rear shocks, check it, see how it's going. 
you know, and also having the motor in the back here, it, because it's unsuspended weight, it does mean it's gonna take more abuse. It's gonna have to absorb more of the actual shocks from the road, from the trail, as opposed to if the motor was again a mid-drive and it would be suspe fully suspended by the suspension on the bike. So, you know, I'm not saying that's necessarily a bad thing, but it is definitely something to consider. Last thing I wanna say about having that motor in the back there is because of the weight, if you guys are used to like throwing your bikes around, you know, getting that rear tire out from under you, it's gonna feel a lot different with this bike. Um, it's felt a lot different for me. Um, I went down a couple of times. It's just, it's just very different dynamics um, because of that extra weight in the back. So <laughs> I'm gonna give this advisor right now, I'll give it once and I won't keep saying it, but be safe on this bike, guys. This thing is an extremely powerful, I'm talking you just, you don't get it until you ride it. I mean, twisting the throttle on this thing, it feels like a freaking, like, like a gas powered bike. Like it's so powerful um, and it will get up to top speed incredibly quick. Top speed on this, by the way, is 50 miles an hour. I think you have to unlock that mode. Um, here uh, on the display, you can contact the company to unlock it to get to that top speed, but 50 miles an hour top speed on this bike is incredibly fast, incredibly, incredibly fast. Um, and it does make this a class four electric bike, okay? So that means it's gonna be an unregulated bike. This thing is really gonna be pretty much illegal to ride on almost every public roadway. So again, just something to keep in mind, kind of if you're thinking about why you want this, uh, if you're using it to commute, you know, you're gonna have to do that at your own risk. It's gonna be almost guaranteed, no matter where you live, probably illegal to ride. I mean, you could make a, you could argue that if you put it in a, you know, economy mode, I think the top speed is uh, 28 miles per hour and it limits it to a thousand watts of power. So that's basically a class three speed pedelec. So maybe you can make that argument, you know, but that's gonna be up to you guys, of course, on what you wanna do with that. Let's see here. Let's, since we're in the back, we'll let's go ahead and talk about these tires here. So there's two types of tires you can get on this bike. The knobbies right here from Razorback and they also have a, a street version here. The knobbies on this, um, I've liked them, they're really good tires, incredible traction, uh, puncture resistant. You can see the tread pattern back here. Um, you know, if I could do this over again, I would maybe get the slicks because I actually find myself riding on the road a lot more than I do off-road. So I don't know, just definitely you know, think about how you're gonna use this bike before you get it. And I think that'll help you guys maybe decide on which tires you should get. Maybe both if you want, but I mean, changing the tires out on this, it's just, it's gonna be a pain because of the motor and all that stuff. So I, <laughs> You could have both, but that would be kind of a pain, I feel like, to kind of go, to switch back and forth with the tires, you know? It's not like a regular bike. Also, you'll probably notice back here on the back of this bike, um, these right here, um, I have these on each side. These are called Shred Lights. They're from a company called Shred Lights. They're just little, like, aftermarket lights you can buy. Um, you can get red or white. And I have this on here to basically improve visibility because there are there's no rear lighting on this bike, even if you get the upgrade package. Um, so I have these, they're pretty cheap, I think they're like 20 bucks a pop, maybe cheaper, something like that. But you can do constant on, low power, strobe, um, or off. And basically, I just have those uh, on there. I have them on my helmet as well. Quite a few of them just to increase visibility, like I was saying. Um, because this bike does so, go so fast, I mean, if I ride it at night, like, I want to be safe, you know, as safe as I can, so I got those. And also, speaking of safety, one last thing I definitely advise, because that top speed is getting a high quality helmet, a full face helmet. This is a, a helmet for a company called Rurock. I've been using, using this one for a while. I like it because it is full face. It's impact tested. It's um, it's pretty legit and it's better for something that's higher speeds like this. I mean, you could almost, I mean, even with this helmet right here, you could almost argue that even this Rurock is like not enough. Like you could even say, maybe you'd want to go for like the Atlas version of this, which is actually like a motorcycle helmet, which is kind of rated for higher speeds, or maybe even actually buying a motorcycle helmet. Um, so yeah, that's all stuff that would be up to you guys, of course, whatever you want to do. Let's see, where can we go here on this? Let's talk about the, the frame here and the, the actual the bike itself. So this is the Stealth B52 Bomber uh, electric bike here is made out of aircraft grade chromoly alloy. So it is incredibly, incredibly durable material here. Um, and it's actually gonna be relatively lightweight. It's gonna help save weight here, but don't let that fool you, the word lightweight, because it's not lightweight. This thing weighs 112 pounds, guys. 112 pounds overall for this bike. It's incredibly heavy and yeah, it's not easy to load this thing in and out of a truck. It's not easy getting it like up and down stairs. Like you can use the, the throttle to kind of like assist going upstairs. That's what I do. But even then it's 
it's not the easiest thing in the world because of the weight. I mean, 112 pounds, that's, that's heavy, that's heavy. So again, just something to keep in mind, that weight, it is definitely going to change the handling of this bike. It does not handle like a regular mountain bike. If you guys are expecting that, just th th throw that idea, throw that notion out right now. There's no way this thing handles more like a dirt bike, but not like a dirt bike, not like a mountain bike. Like it handles like its own unique vehicle. It's kind of hard to explain. Um, it's just different, man. Like it's light enough to, to still whip around and stuff like a, like a downhill mountain bike, but it's, I mean, I, I find myself not really catching a whole lot of air with this thing. Uh, just because how heavy it is even though i know the suspension can handle it but i don't know 112 pounds very heavy and it's just difficult to get this thing around but you know it is what it is you got that massive battery in here right so the battery on this okay the battery on this bike is it's a 72 volt system right here okay and this is where the battery lives it's going to be all inside of here um well so first of all this these compartments come off right here you can un unbolt these on both sides pop off that panel if you want to access the battery um and if water does get in here, there is like a, um, it's water, battery itself is waterproof. So it's okay if this thing gets soaked, if it gets submerged pretty much. The only thing you really can't do is pressure wash it. But honestly, anything else, this thing is gonna be waterproof enough. And if water does get inside the main compartment, it will drain out and the battery and the components, the electronics in here will stay okay, which is I think really important because you know, this is gonna be a big, a real off-road bike. You're gonna be taking it through water. So battery compartment, you're good to go for water in there. And inside there, 72 volt system, <laughs> 2,000 watt hours for this bike. 2,000 watt hour battery, which is, it's the biggest battery I've ever seen. It's absolutely ridiculous. I mean, for perspective, like an average size electric bike battery is gonna be about 500 watts. And even that's kind of like a larger than average capacity, maybe a little bit larger than average. A thousand watt hours is like, what the heck would you even do with that? It's so much, so much energy. But this thing has 2,000 watt hours of juice it's just it's a lot of, a lot of juice guys so the range for that right realistically i think the range for this they say on the website um i think it's like 60 miles is what they estimate for the the max range and yeah i mean if you ride this thing with you know maybe an economy mode if you're not gassing it you know the entire time yeah you could probably get 60 miles on pavement you know doing riding like that but realistically I, you know, I've been getting around 35, 40 miles or so on the trails. And of course, just like everything, it's totally gonna depend on how hard you ride this, what kind of terrain you go up. Is it gonna be, uh, you know, sandy? Is it gonna be uh, soft terrain? You can go up a bunch of hills, just like any vehicle. That's gonna really determine how much range you can get on that. So yeah, all in all, all that to be said, huge battery, uh, not as much range as you would think though, because of, of that, even though the battery is that big, because of how powerful this bike is. So yeah, that's so something to keep in mind there. Now we talked about the price here, right? Remember the starting price is 10,400. I think you can go up to like 12,008. I don't know, so almost close to $13,000. And some of the upgrade points on this are gonna be the color scheme. So you can get kind of a custom color option like this. You'll see I have like red, uh, red rims, red seat, red saddle, red uh, handlebars pedals kind of like all matched with the black there. So that, that's gonna cost extra right there. You can get this light up here for, I think it's like 500 bucks. I think it's from a company called Fiori. I don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, I haven't seen it before. This is actually really good light, guys. Um, it is 500 bucks, which I think is pretty expensive. Output is gonna be 1700 lumens. It runs off of four 18650 batteries. So uh, I think one time they say like, I don't know, 17 hours in the lowest mode. Sure, but realistically, probably like an hour and a half or so on the, on the full 1700, you know, brightness there. And it's cool. I like this light just mostly because of how easy it is to install. It's got these little latches right here to kind of clip on. And I like how clean it looks, but for 500 bucks, I mean, honestly, I don't know. You could probably get one that's just as good, um, you know, on Amazon or something that may not look quite as clean for half the price. So it's just up to you. I mean, I shoot, if you guys are spending, you know, this much money on a bike, probably a couple of hundred bucks for like a light that like matches it may not be that big of a deal, but yeah, that's so <laughs> whatever. Um, another upgrade point here is gonna be the suspension. So let me go back on this side, get the better lighting. So suspension is gonna be another upgrade point here. Um, <clears throat> these are MRP grooves right here. So these are the, this is the suspension that I got on my bike here. This is the, uh, this was the upgrade um, option. So 
basically the, the biggest difference is going to be between the upgraded option and the the regular option is that these ones are going to be inverted whereas the other ones are going to be regular regular ones so let me just tell you though what you would get um, because it's a little bit different right now they've, they've changed what the upgrade options are so suspension now um, the the standard one is going to be dnm usd8 air forks with 200 millimeters of travel that's the standard one uh, for this bike right here and then the upgrade one is going to be the DVO Emerald. That's the upgrade. So not the MRP groove here. It's going to be the uh, the DVO Emerald. So that one has 200 uh, millimeters of suspension as well. It's going to be a carbon composite, inverted forks with a dual crown up there. So it's going to be extremely, extremely durable, uh, fully adjustable. And basically, the whole point of the whole point of the of the having inverted here is it helps to it helps to smooth out the ride. And it also, uh, we talked about the suspended weight back, you know, earlier about the, the motor. Having the inverted forks means the entire fork is going to be suspended. Um, compared to having the suspension on the top, the rest of that fork is not going to be suspended. I hope it's kind of hard to explain, but basically it's just going to be, they're, they're better shocks. Now, do you need the upgraded shocks? Um, I would say, honestly, probably not. Not unless you are going to do some serious, serious uh, trail use with this bike. Um, I'm talking like racing and stuff, but otherwise I think that the the standard shocks are going to be probably fine for this upgrade ones. Yeah, they're going to be better, of course. So that will just be up to you. Do you are you really going to be using it for like hardcore stuff or just like, you know, maybe light trails like this, just hauling through, you know, kind of regular trails, whatever. So again, going to be up to you. Now, another upgrade point is going to be back here for the brakes. Right here. So these zoom in there we go wait why is not changing there we go okay so yeah <laughs> these um these are the magura mt7 brakes right here this is another upgrade point so the standard brakes on this bike are going to be the magura mt5s okay now the biggest difference between these the magura mt7s and the magura mt5s is the Magura MT5s are gonna be a quad piston dual caliper. So they only have two calipers back here um, for the MT5s. The MT7s, these ones are quad piston quad calipers, or sorry, quad uh, brake uh, discs. Uh, what are they called? The, the actual, uh, the pads, sorry, the quad pads. And so they're separated, so it's better for heat dispersion. It actually helps to keep the heat out of it, which is gonna be better for more intense rides. Um, so going to save a little bit of weight, not really that much. Really, it's about the thermal dissipation of these upgraded brakes. The other cool thing about the MT7s is they have adjustable bite points, uh, a tool-free adjustable bite points, so you can really fine-tune when these brakes set and when they actually start gripping the, um, the, the caliper here. These are 203 millimeter calipers, by the way. Also, with the Magura MT7s, it is going to be a tool-free um, uh, reach adjust as well, so I can actually adjust it on the fly if I want, make them... Uh, closer to the handlebars or further away. So pretty cool. If I had to opt for an upgrade between the suspension and the brakes, I would definitely say go for the brakes because again, 50 mile an hour top speed, you're gonna want every single bit of extra stopping power you can possibly get with those kinds of speeds. It's just a lot of speed. Speaking of suspension here in the rear, what were we talking about suspension? I don't even know. In the rear, uh, this is a DNM uh, air spring suspension right here, and that's going to be 250 million, millimeters of travel. Both the suspension here, uh, this one in the back, this one in the front, they're going to be fully adjustable, preload adjust, lockout, all that stuff. You can you can really fine tune these so you can have riders of different weights ride this thing and you know get it locked in, dialed into exactly how you want to ride it. So definitely good suspension on here. I really like that. I like how easy it is to adjust these too. Like check this out. If I wanted to adjust this, boom, just turn this right here. And that's, I mean, it's like, it's that easy. So you can do it on the fly if you're changing kind of trail styles, whatever. And uh, I really like that. So the throttle, right? Cause we're talking about 50 mile an hour top speed. Um, first of all, what does it feel like to ride this thing at top speed? It feels scary, man. Like, <laughs> that's just fast. It feels scary. I mean, I just being honest with you, every time I get on this bike, it's kind of like, it gets hairy every time I ride it. Uh, which is awesome because it's never dull it never it never gets boring but it feels like an adrenaline rush like it is the most fun i've ever had personally on an electric vehicle really any vehicle i mean i grew up riding everything man quads dirt bikes jet skis like whatever and um man, this thing is just so much fun like 
having that much power on tap and having it be silent, it's just, it's the coolest ever. So, but to get to that top speed, okay, you have to use the throttle, all right? Throttle's up here. There is no pedal assist in this bike. It's only throttle. And at first I was like, man, what the heck? Like, what a miss, like, why would they do that? But the reality is, is this motor is just so powerful that having pedal assist, I actually think would be dangerous on this. Um, it could just, it could activate too much too quickly when you're not ready for it. And it could just easily make this thing just flip over. I mean, it's really that powerful. So I think having the throttle in here actually makes sense after having ridden it. Um, and the throttle is really responsive. It's got a small dead zone right when you start it, like right about here, it's a dead zone for safety. You might be able to tweak that so it's like live right off the bat, but I, the dead zone actually, again, I think it was a good move for them. I like it that there's a small dead zone. And then once you get past that dead zone, it's very, very sensitive. You can do very small adjustments for speed, really get this thing going up the top speed, you know, really quick if you want, or you can just easily cruise at 10, 15 miles an hour and you have like full control of the throttle. So I really like that. Now to switch gears on this, this is the, one of the most interesting things about this bike, I think. It has a, uh, a nine gear se sequential uh, V box here in the bottom. That's what this, this piece is right here. So it, I mean, it's, I guess it kind of works kind of like a car, um, um, transmission where it's sequential, it's got actually gears in here and it switches. So it's not like a derailleur that you typically see, you know, back here on like your bikes, it's, it's totally different. Um, and you switch gears, kind of like the old school grip shifts, remember those? Um, and you can switch them with this right here. So that's how that works, which is pretty cool. The only thing I want to say about that, that V-Box, um, that can require a little bit of maintenance after like a ton of miles. So keep an eye on that, you know, over time, um, if you guys get one of these, just, um, you know, make sure it's actually being kept up for maintenance because you don't want that thing going out on you. Also another just little, little tip for riding this thing. I mean, really just like any other bike, when you do switch gears, you definitely want to, want to ease off the cranks. Um, you can keep, you can keep power in the throttle if you want, but just ease off the cranks when you're switching gears. Otherwise it will grind really, really hard. So yeah. Let's see what else. I love this thing has internally routed wires, pretty much almost for the, all of it is almost internally routed. Nice in, the, in there, dig that. A little messy up here in the front. Not a huge fan of that. Um, a big part of that messiness though comes from the actual uh, the headlight. This little piece right here, this is the battery. All this extra wire, I, I, I hate that. <laughs> like, I just, I can't stand it. So I'm gonna probably end up buying a uh, shorter connector cable here at some point for this one, just so it's not as much bunch, bunched up cable. I wanna keep it looking clean. And um, man, I don't know, I guess I could keep talking about this thing for days, but oh, one more thing I do wanna say here about the bike itself is gonna be the saddle. Um, so this is how the saddle comes. It's like a, it's like a pretty standard, through, I'm pretty sure it's a 300 millimeter length um, uh, um, saddle right here, the, the stem. So this is too, it's too tall for me. It's probably gonna be too tall for a lot of you guys. I'm 5'10", so anything that, si that height or below probably gonna be too tall. As you can see, it's like sticking out here at the bottom. You don't want that. So I left it so you guys could see it because this is the, that's how it came to me. Um, I'm gonna end up cutting that down a little bit just because when this thing does, when the suspension compresses right here, this does get lower and it can strike that tube, which I do not want. So just throwing that out there. And one of the last things to talk about here is going to be the actual control center. So this is a key operated system. You do have to have a key on here. You also have to put in a code, which I've already done because I don't want to tell you guys my code, but there's a code when you turn this on. So even if like you, if somebody gets your key somehow, it's not like they can just, you know, ride off of this thing with the throttle at least. They can still pedal it away, but the system is not going to turn on unless you have the code, which is, which is pretty cool. Um, the screen here is, it's just a basic like, um, LCD screen here, just a grayscale. It's pretty easy to read um, in, in direct sunlight. The only thing about this display, I mean, I like that it's so tucked into the actual body here, but because of the position right here, if you really want to check something, you have to like really put your head down and take it off the trail. So, I mean, it's just, it can be a little tricky to check this thing at tops at higher speed. So just something to keep in mind. But the information that it has, there's quite a bit of information here. Battery level on the right, you see you got about 90%. Efficiency on the left, just like if you guys have an electric car, depending on how much you know throttle you use, it'll it'll climb up to kind of tell you how efficient you're being. You can switch between the trip distances, trip A, trip B. You can go into the different modes, and you'll see that there's a different screens here. We've got the motor temp, control temp, battery volts, which is a very accurate way to determine how much juice you have left in the battery, which I really like that. Um, power used, 189 watt hours, barely anything. Again, efficiency bottom left, and then 
bottom right, we have brake regen. Oh yeah, I actually forgot to talk about the brake regen here. So hold on, let's finish this up. Menu, uh, you push that again, you get to the different kind of like uh, adjustable levels back here. You can select power mode, all the limits, tire size, all the you know back end info is there. Hit it again and it's gonna go back to your main kind of like how you ride with it. So let's turn that off, or that <laughs> annoying beeping. So this thing does have uh, regenerative braking, which I forgot to talk about, which is awesome. So that little red button right there um, reverses the polarity on the motor. So if I'm going down a steep hill, I can hit that and it is a pretty powerful and efficient brake, especially at higher speeds. And it will feed energy back into the battery, which is, I mean, why not have the extra juice? But really why I like that is because it's gonna help save the brake pads. I mean, you're gonna get some juice, sure, not a ton, honestly but it's gonna really save on the brake pads themselves. Again, because this thing is so heavy, so being able to use that as a stopping force is, I think, fantastic. I really like that, because you don't always see that on, a, on geared hub motors, mostly just on gearless, so kind of cool. But yeah, guys, I mean, there's so much, there's so much to talk about on this bike. I mean, I could just honestly ramble on and on and on. I mean, this thing has just been so fun to test and ride. But I think it is time to take this beauty on a, on a test ride, so. Let's go.
All right, awesome peeps. That is pretty much it for the Stealth B52 Bomber electric bike review. In conclusion, let's talk about the price again, right? Because at starting at 10,400 bucks, this thing is just astronomically expensive for an electric bike, but you know, you gotta think about like, it's the highest thing that there is. You know, there's really nothing better than this bike for production electric bikes as far as power and speed goes. There are some companies that make, you know, kind of different versions like this, and there's some good ones out there, but as far as production goes, with some a company's got a warranty. These guys, by the way, guys, they have a, a limited lifetime warranty on this entire bike, which is like, I don't even think I've ever heard of that. So they're an incredibly good company as far as like feeling secure about dumping over 10 grand into something, but uh, it's still expensive. I mean, it doesn't, that doesn't negate the price. There's so much, else that you could buy for this if you were going to just get an electric bike. I mean, you can get like a really good bike for five grand, it's electric, and it's going to accomplish, you know, a lot of what this can. This though is really going to be for the person who wants the best of the best. Somebody who wants to have ridiculous power on tap and somebody I think who's looking for more than an electric bike, but less than a motorcycle, because that's really what this is. This isn't really an electric bike, in my opinion. Yeah, it's got pedals, but this is not an electric bike. It's like a super electric bike, right? I mean, just like Tesla is not really an electric car. I mean, 1.8 seconds from zero to 60, like give me a break. I mean, that's, that's like a race car. So uh, this thing fits in its own category. And I think for those of you who are you know into it, you probably kind of get it. But I think for a lot of us out there, it's gonna be maybe too expensive. And that's okay, because this isn't for everybody. But I will say that riding this thing is just one of the coolest experiences I've ever had. It's just so much fun. Again, having that power on tap, being able to go zero to 50 miles per hour, and I don't know how many seconds, but it feels really quick. I mean, this thing will, this thing will wheelie with just the throttle and barely even pulling back on it. You know, at 20 miles per hour, you just hit the throttle, boop, wheel pops up. I mean, this thing will climb anything that I can throw at it. This thing has been able to climb it. As far as like going off road, it's been able to handle like pretty much any kind of terrain I've thrown at it. And um, yeah, it's just awesome. I have ridden it on the street at some places where it's kind of quieter and it's <laughs> it's pretty awesome for getting around town. I, of course I do drive it more slowly, but it's like, you know, you get up to a, a steep hill in town and you just, you can go the speed limit. You know, if it's like a 25, 25 mile per hour side street, it's just, you just hit the throttle and you're right up there. So. A lot of cool stuff here, guys. The technology on this is just cutting edge. The motor, the controller, all that stuff. The, the, the battery management system is it's very cutting edge stuff. And um, yeah, so that's it. Again, hope you dug this review. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you're, hope, hope you're having a fantastic day and I'll catch you guys next time.